Hey y'all, so today I've got Kano vs. Briar for you guys, and as you can imagine, this matchup is very quick. Um, so I actually have two games in this one video. Um, and yeah, let's get into game one. My opponent won the die roll and has chosen to go first. So we have a hand full of blues, uh, which is nice. Uh, both of us are running Everfest cards. And uh, you can see the portion of Deja Vu in my hand. I want to give that a shot. Uh, this was, yeah, my first time trying this list. Um, I want to see how Potion of Deja Vu compares to Energy Potion. So I'm actually running both potions, like three of each potion in this deck, along with the Eye of Ophidia, which is very greedy. But I, I really want to see how this new potion performs. So my opponent starts with Entwine Lightning not fused. So I know this is the last thing that's coming, this this combat chain. I mean, unless they pop stamp fragments, I guess, but there's no point. So I like to take a damage here because yeah, because I want to start canoing off the top and having the extra blue, especially since I know I'm gonna be able to opt to with his eye of a fidia, could come in handy. Right. Unfortunately I see two blues on the top, which is definitely not great. Yep, send them both to the bottom. So this becomes a blind Kano and... Ooh. So I find a red Aether Flare and yeah, here's where I really like that I kept the extra blue in hand. Because now I can Kano again and that thing can be buffed by the Aether Flare. My opponent is running three Arcane Barrier though, so... Yeah, this was not something I was expecting going into the matchup. Uh, I saw Briar across from me and I thought, oh, there'll be low Arcane Barrier, this will just be a race. So I sided in my Aether Flares. Turned out my opponent was running three Arcane Barrier. Uh, finding a blue Voltic Bolt is... It's alright. Uh, what do you really want to see? What I really want to see was a one cost attack, a uh, one cost non-attack. So I could Crucible and Aether Flare and play the one cost thing. Uh, whereas now, if I want to use a Voltic Bolt, I can't Crucible. So, yeah, I elect not to Crucible. So instead of doing one attack of four, I decided to do two attacks of three, which my opponent is running Arcane Barrier three, which means two attacks of three, they could block it out completely. But I'm trying to hedge that they don't have enough blues. Like while my opponent is running Arcane Barrier three, the other thing you need to think about when you're playing Kano is whether the deck has the blues to support pitching to the Arcane Barrier. So if my opponent doesn't have another blue, they will need to use both cards to block this, and then they don't end this turn with an Arshal, which is which is huge. So there we go, they just they, they have a red and they use that to block one of it. So we got two damage in. And then we come to our turn. So we have a potion of deja vu in hand. Unfortunately, it's our only blue, so we can't really play it. Okay, I remember my tuning trigger, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I get the reverberate out of my hand. I didn't need to, of course, I could just pitch the blue to Crucible and Voltic Bolt. But given my opponent has three arcane barrier, I decide there's really no point holding on to this reverberate. Uh, and they just take six, yeah. So either they have no blues in hand or they really need the blue to do what they're trying to do. Which, you know, this is a Channel Mount Heroic Raya, so they do need their blues to be able to play that card. Okay, start with a Bramble Spark and a Red Ravenous Rabble, hitting a red. So I take the Arcane, uh, I, I don't think there's any point pitching to this. Because then I'll just be floating too randomly unless I pitch a red. And I don't think there's going to be much more Arcane coming. So this hand is very nice, uh, what I have here. Because with one blue, I can Crucible and Aether Flare, and then snap back after that, and snap back will have its damage increased by Aether Flare. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my opponent plays Rebel and Rune Blood. So, you know, uh, pitching for the Arcane would have come in handy, but I guess, I mean, this is coming in for four, so I can still, still block three damage by pitching a blue.
and lightning sessions is coming for a total of eight. Whew. So yeah, I do have one blue, one blue to spare for my hand. Because I can do the crucible either plus snapback off of just one blue. So yeah. Go ahead and pitch that. The difference between pitching it or blocking with it is honestly not gonna matter. This game, this game's not gonna last long enough. But whatever, just pitch it, right? At this point, I'm kind of regretting this Tomb of Feindal in Arsenal. It's just, it's way too slow. Although, I don't think I even had a much better option for something to Arsenal, so... Yeah. So it's coming for 4, and my opponent just takes it, so now the snapback comes in for 7, which is really nice. But, yeah, Briar with 4 card hand, and when my Arsenal is not an offensive card, it just doesn't feel very good. Yep, <laughs> this is a snatch for seven. And I really want to play this Aether Spindle on my turn. Um, so like, I could block this out. Uh, I just, I, I don't see how I win unless I get this Aether Spindle off on my turn. So blocking this out, you know, won't let me play my Aether Spindle. So I think I like to just let this through and force my opponent to use the Snapdragons. Maybe that was the wrong call. But, yeah, I guess an option could have been blocked with, uh, to block with a Scalding Rain, Aether Spindle, and Voltic Bolt, and on my turn just play Tomb of Aether Wind and hope to draw enough blues to Kano off the top, but yeah, just feels like a very low value play. Okay, so this rival reveals a blue, so that's nice. That's only two. Uh huh. And then they pop their arms to get two rune chants, and then swarming gloom veil is now coming in for four with two arcane from rune chants. Um, and actually, its final ability is also active because my opponent has created embodiments of earth, so they have created three auras this turn. Yeah. So this is just. So much pressure. Yeah, so so maybe I think maybe I was supposed to block out the snatch. I decided to put my opponent on do you have it basically? Because you know it's not always that they have like a hand full of these zero cost go again cards, right? Like the Ravel and the Swarming Gloom Veil. Especially that version of Brian might just have, you know, sitting on like a Blue Bramble Spark or a Channel Monterey that they can't play. Yep, so I take the rune chance and then I block this. And uh, yeah. So I can no longer prevent arcane damage this turn. I mean, not that I was planning to anyway. Yeah, so I switched strategy. I was like, okay, I won't be able to play as Aether Spindle anymore. So I'm just gonna Tomb of Fendal off my tunic and try and Kano off the top into something good. And then my opponent pitches the Snatch to Rosetta. And the reason they do that instead of playing the Snatch is because we already saw what the top card is. Uh, the Ravenous Rebel revealed a Tomb of Harvests. And there is, there's no way you want to arsenal a Tomb of Harvests. Because the only way you can get it out is with another Tomb of Harvests. So, yep. Cool. So yeah, I use the Tomb off of Tunic Resource. I'm drawing to another red Aether Spindle. Uh, yeah. I came off the top and it's a blue, so that's pretty rough. Mm, I know I don't want to arsenal this Tomb of Findel again. It's just, it's way too slow. I'd rather arsenal the Spindle. So, yeah. I just pitched the Tomb of Findel to play this blue snapback for two.
So honestly, this hand isn't bad. Like Aether Wildfire with Snapback is a very, very strong combination. It's obviously best if this Aether Wildfire, Aether Wildfire was what was in my arsenal instead of the Spindle. So opponent comes in with Rabble again and reveal another uh, H3. So that's nice. It's only coming for five after Nimbleism. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I made a mistake there, which my opponent let me take back, because I should have put Tunic in front of this so that for the Rosetta that comes in, I don't need to uh, pitch for the Arcane. So look at this, and I'm honestly just lensing to um, to dig for uh, a tomb, a tomb of Aetherwind, basically. Yeah. Oh yeah. So there, my opponent lets me take back the missed tunic block. Yeah. Got three health, so I can't take the arcane from Rosetta and just like block it. Hmm. I actually think my best play here is to just block with uh, to send both of these to the bottom. Just block with one of my blues, and on my turn, use the other blue to play the Aether Spindle from Arsenal. And then I'll Arsenal the Aether Wildfire. So when it goes to their turn, I have Wildfire in Arsenal and a red snapback in hand, which can be kind of nice. I, I wonder if that's what I end up doing. Uh, oh yeah, I pitched the Arcane instead of blocking the physical, because it keeps the card in the deck. But I mean, that, like I said earlier, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, okay, so I do end up doing that. That's nice. My opponent blocks three of the uh two of this. Uh yeah. Which is very important. You can't let Kano opt five. That's just too scary. So I'm just looking for blues, basically. Um I want to be on my turn, I want to pop some shriders and wildfire. And then just have blues to just find something good off the top with Kano. So I just leave the energy portion up there. Cool. So we drew, so now we have two blues. Another wildfire isn't what we want to see, but that's fine. So we basically have one chance to Kano something good off the top. Uh, if that, because one full blue needs plays the wildfire. Oh, no, yeah, so yeah, one full blue plays the wildfire because the storm striders plus wildfire, and then we need one more resource to play the snapback after that. So let's say we pitched the other red aether wildfire for that, which is left with one blue in hand. So that just gives us a Kano, but no resources to play that card. So unless it's a tomb of aether wind, this, uh, yeah, that's the tomb of aether wind. Um, Pretty much don't have a good shot here. Yep, so I pitched a K now. And it's a sonic boom. Which is not good enough. I believe this E-Strike's coming in for 7. So I, I could theoretically block it, just use my whole hand. But then losing these wildfires to me means, like, feels like I don't have a way back into the game. So I think I like to try and cast this Sonic Boom and just hope to get lucky and find a Tomb off the top. Since we haven't seen a Tomb of Aetherwind yet. Yep, so I'm deciding whether to Crucible. And I think I choose not to... Uh, because my opponent only has two arcane bearers, so this thing hits regardless. Yeah, so yeah, so, so I should be floating one, my opponent only takes one. Uh, and it's an energy potion, which is a whiff. Uh, Sonic Boom can't cast that since it's not a wizard card. And then, yeah, so I can only block six from this, and yeah. Um, there, there could have been a play there where 
I pitch an energy portion, and once I see the Sonic Boom, I elect to just block out this E-Strike with the rest of my cards. Or maybe I just block out to begin with, and then pitch the energy portion and just play a snapback on my turn. Um, neither of those options felt very good to me. I feel like I was... That would just be delaying the inevitable, because eventually my opponent just comes in like Rosetta Arcane. Uh, and then I'm forced to spend two cards for Rosetta, and yeah. Yep, so that was game number one. And let's skip the game to the start of game number two. Okay, so this is the start of game two. And this time I've elected to go first. So let's see. Typically in your opening hand as Kano, you want to see a few more blues. So you can Kano off the top. Yep. Uh, yeah. So looking at this, our play is basically Voltic Bolt with Crucible. Mm -hmm. And then I decide to arsenal the Wildfire, because I'd rather block with Blazing Aether than the Wildfire. Ah, my opponent is pitching differently, since yeah, I want to get those red overloads out of their hand. I was very shocked when I saw this card, this is my, this is my first time seeing this card. So we have the snapback uh, Aether Wildfire line again. Uh, but again, just not enough blues to support that. So this looks like it's a turn where we just block with Lazing Aether and snapback and just Crucible to Aether Spindle on our turn. So my opponent comes in with Entwine Lightning Fused. Yep, block with the Blazing Aether. It's two committal, just keep it in your hand. And then the Enlightened Strike. And I think this is coming in for seven. Yep. So yeah, so that's our Lightning... I mean, we assume they left the Lightning Surge in hand, which they revealed for the Lightning Fusion. So next turn they have a easy source of Zero resources, four damage go again. Yep. And then we just go Crucible, Spindle for five. And then my opponent doesn't block it at all, which is terrifying. Because you don't want to let Kano opt five. Um, so the fact that they let me do that means that they probably have a terrifying hand. So I'm looking at this and I know I have an Aether Wildfire in my arsenal. And based on my opponent not blocking this at all, I'm reading that they have a very strong hand. So I expect to need to go off next turn during their turn. So instead of, say, dumping like three of these to the bottom and hoping I find a red that I can play on my turn, uh, I decide to just keep the four blues. Um, and I also send the Tomb of Fendal uh, down to the bottom because I just want to find reds on the top uh, to... So I can start my start the sequence with Aether Wildfire and then just Kano into a bunch of reds. That that was the game plan I was thinking of right now. Okay, my pitch uh Pulse and Swarming Bloomville to Channel Mantra. Again, this is what I was talking about in that first game, right? Like the opponent could be running three arcane barrier, but does that deck have enough blues to be able to use all of it consistently? And here we see exactly that issue. Uh, they pitched a yellow and a red to be able to play this channel on Heroic. So, yep, this Lightning Surge is coming in for a casual 7 with go again and no resources. Uh, and then they come in for a snatch for 7. And I'm already at 18. So, yeah, so I, so I realized that, sure, you know, if I take this, if I don't go off now, there kind of is nothing I can do on my turn except just try and Kano off the top. Because Aether Wildfire does nothing on your turn. I mean, it just deals damage on your turn. So, if my plan on my turn is to Kano off the top, I might as well just Kano off the top now, where I could try and get something, get more damage in, because I can play the Aether Wildfire off of Storm Shriders. So yeah, I pop the lens to see what I can get. 
And I see Reverberate and Tomb of Ether Windows are very good opts. Yep, and I put the Tomb second because I don't want to draw into the Reverberate. Because it's a red, I'd rather draw into blues. Um, yeah. So I pitched a Kano and get this Reverberate. And now I could have pitched to Kano again to get the Tomb and then draw two. Uh, yeah, draw two first, which I think was the better play. Uh, yeah, instead, so I, I I know I want to, my first damaging spell this turn has to be the Aether Wildfire, because that just increases the damage of everything else this turn. Um, so, yeah, so that part's fine, but I think I should have pitched a Kano here. Um, I got very caught into the idea of reverberating out this Gaze, of, Gaze the Ages, so that I can opt two and it goes back to my hand. Um, yeah. So I end up doing that instead of just Tomb of Aether Winding first, which would have been the better play. Uh, uh, the reason I wanted to use the Gaze Opt is so I could sort of ensure that I draw at least one blue off of the Tomb that I'm going to cast. Um, but if I just play the Tomb of Aether Wind first, I can still banish this uh, Gaze the Ages from my hand. Um, but if I drew a good red, I could reverberate it. I could have reverberated out the red instead, which, you know, yeah. So anyway, so I opt down the one of the tombs and play the other tomb off the top and then just continue canoing. And I find a Blazing Aether, which is awesome. So right now, this Blazing Aether is coming in for 15 because they took four from Wildfire, seven from Reverberate. So that's 11. So Blazing Aether is coming for 11 plus four because it is also buffed by the Wildfire. So I'm a little short, so I decide to Kano again. I find a Tomb of Fendal. I cast it. I'm still floating one. I draw two. And then I draw a red snapback. So then I'm just there. Uh, I could have buffed the snapback by Crucible and Matakara Pissing, but it doesn't matter. I just snap back for seven. Uh, and then I Blazing Aether for a total of 22. So this ended up being a full 40 damage turn. 4 damage from Aether Wildfire, 7 from Reverberate, 7 from Snapback. So that's 18 damage together, those 3 spells. So Blazing Aether comes in for 18 base, plus 4 from Wildfire for a total of 22. And that's a grand total of 40 damage. So yeah, this matchup is just, you know, it's just really quick. Um, I think Kano has to get somewhat lucky. Like what I managed to pull off here is not, you know, very consistent. It's not something you can always aim to do, like 40 damage in one turn. Whereas Briar's side of the field is a lot more consistent. They have a whole bunch of zero attack, as uh, zero resource, four damage, uh, sometimes threatens and on hit, and a lot of them have go again. So I feel like for Kano to survive this, you need to get slightly luckier. I don't think it's completely Briar favored. I do think it's slightly Briar, Briar favored. Um, but with the addition of Aether Wildfire, this matchup's definitely gotten a lot better because it's just it is so scary to tap out against Kano now. Uh, but when I say tap out, I mean to be floating no resources and having no cards in hand. That it's yeah, it is very scary to do that now because of stuff like this. Like even if you know, even if say I didn't draw into that red snapback, if I just played that blazing aether, that was still another eighteen damage on top of the fourteen I already dealt. That was a thirty-two damage turn by itself, uh, which is wait, sorry, no, sorry, it was a twenty-six damage turn, which is. Still very scary. So yeah, those were the two games I had for you guys today. And thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it.